Wired. Unplugged. Hello, everybody. Good day. Good day. Good day. Uh, and, uh, and welcome to Wired Unplugged, episode 48. Aaron, it's good to see you. How are you doing this week? It's, I'm, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, mm -hmm. There is lots going on now. We spoke at the end of the year about, you know, things are going to start to quieten down. And now we're getting into that period where shows are coming up and so on, which we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. And things are starting to expand and explode. Yeah, um, very quickly. Very, very quickly. Um, and there's lots of cool things coming up. Um, so, you know, things are starting to kick into high gear now, which is which is great. Um, but before we, we dive into all this, and this isn't, this isn't in the run of anything, uh -huh. we have to make um, some minor corrections to uh, mainly for our listeners in Melbourne. Uh -huh. in Australia uh -huh. uh, regarding uh, what we spoke about last week about Aunt Boomerang. Um, I was... Um, oh, yeah. oh, no. Steve called me out um, and he, he said the impression wasn't bad. The accent wasn't bad. Thank you. That's good. Um, but I did get everything else wrong. Uh, so the show, <laughs> the show was called Crazy Aunt. No, no, no. Not Crazy Aunt. Oh, my. I've, I've messed it up again. Be, it's Barmy Aunt the Boomerang. Next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll cover that off next week. Um, Barmy Aunt Boomerang. Uh -huh. It wasn't on CITV, it was on CBBC. Oh my um, god. And and Aunt Boomerang was played by uh Latoya Wilcox. Right, Toya Wilcox the singer. Not Latoya, oh my god. Sorry, I've been watching so much Michael Jackson stuff recently for some no, reason. Yeah, Toya, Toya it's Wilcox. just popping up on my that, YouTube algorithm like, oh that, that Michael so, Jackson in the studio, I'll check that's that. Out. I mean this this but would be a great Toya Wilcox. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Toya Wilcox, the, the singer, right? Yeah. An yeah, a, an yeah, actor, yeah. And, actor presenter yeah um multifaceted and, swiss army knife of a woman and also yeah. sometimes uh fictional australian yeah which which make kind of makes sense that my uh my thing was uh passable because also um she was born, she was born this is a, a <laughs> toy of wilcox this is your life now yeah. but uh she was born in uh king's heath in birmingham not far from where hey. i was uh where i was produced um but <laughs> <laughs> another interesting fact another interesting fact um is that uh the, the boy in the show was none other than richard madden who was who went on to be rob stark, rob stark king of the north in game of thrones king, king of, the of the north, north. yeah he was in rocket man he was yeah. in 1917 and he was also uh icarus in uh eternals isn't he he's he's in that uh the bodyguard or something isn't he that that uh show is that a sort and, uh, of yeah I was, yeah, yeah, bodyguard as well. Um, I was also looking at his face earlier. Um, it's quite a handsome face, to be honest. Very handsome face. And yeah. I think, I think, could be a good option to be a Superman. A Superman replacement. I think he's got a... Replacement, exactly, because Henry Cavill is with, uh, well... Uh, he's warhammering he's now, war isn't he? He's warhammering. I love, yeah. by the way, this is a tangent within a tangent, but I love that Warhammer, probably the sweatiest thing you can do apart from play Magic the Gathering is how i've spent my week by the way uh yeah. and how they're like how are we gonna get non-nerds into this they cast henry cavill and anna de Armas. oh i see i i, I didn't did know about anna de Armas. yeah yeah wow so i like it i, I hope I, look like a, a miss world <laughs> pageant lifting weights yeah. at the same time as well as yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah how sweaty it can get yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. one hand on a deck of cards um yeah. uh, well, well okay so if, if you'd like to email any sort of children's television related factual uh, error corrections you can do so by emailing unplugged at wireproductions.com or you can tweet us on p for productions of television shows that will be corrected or that wired does. unplugged which is our very own twitter account uh we don't run it but we are you know it's us so we, we, we're there we check it out we're there a bit, aren't we? no no we're yeah, we, we've, we've, yeah, got, yeah. we've got people um anyway yeah yeah great so i mean all right then i can't believe we made that blunder the one where we were really sort of showing the australians you know our, our worth I yeah. did sort of get a comment. Not, I feel like I'm rubbing it in a bit now, but I mean, as a whole, as a collective, we did get the Tim Tam Slam thing, you know. Yeah, Tim Tam Slam. Tim Tam Slam works. Us saying about, oh yeah, the Australian show crazy Barmy Aunt Boomerang, featuring a woman who's doing an Australian accent from Birmingham. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sorry, Our sorry. Podcast, I don't know, someone from Birmingham doing an Australian accent yeah. last week. So 
Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> we're, we're the lowest the air load yeah, in yeah, Melbourne yeah. now. It's yeah. like I'm Australia probably more popular in Melbourne right now as well. So <laughs> great, great news. Anyway, so it's it's a, it's been an exciting week. Like you say, this is the week where I've really started to notice things are ramping up because mm. I'm feeling kind of torn between what I want to read or what I want to do in the games industry. Yeah. You know, that's the I've got kind of option paralysis uh for being a, a lover of video games because I've got a lot of stuff. The only things I did manage to do this week are play loads of Magic the Gathering and download a demo, which I'll talk about in the propaganda segment because it's related. Um I I, I I'm with you though. I, I'm 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 torn for options at the moment. My we spoke about my backlog, right? And what I'm trying to do with mm. my year of play what I feel like. Blah, yeah. blah, blah. Yeah. I got um I got Fire Emblem Engage through the post last week, which oh, I'm excited great. to yeah, yeah. get in and play. Very excited about that. Yeah. Um, but um, I've got some things to get through before I get there, but we'll see how I feel. But I did. I did finish Nia Automata for the first time. Okay, so hang on a minute. This is confusing for those that don't know. So Nia Automata is a game with famously about 17 endings, and actually the first uh, ending... Uh, well, is, is... Uh, well, actually, I I'll tell you, there is an ending for every single letter of the alphabet. All right, so that's just like 20 So whatever. there are, um, I've done one ending, so the first ending you get. I've yeah. started a second playthrough, which changes the game. Um, and then there are essentially A to E yeah. are your e, yeah, e, playthrough e. endings. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then everything else beyond that is um, special secret endings or joke endings. So, yeah. you know, I, I got an ending for accidentally yeah uh, all for at the start of the game it's like oh you can press in both sticks to self-destruct i'm like why would i ever do that what's the point of that yeah. there's not really any point um really if i'm honest um <laughs> and, <laughs> and i decided on my second playthrough i was like ah I, i've started off let's see what it's all about you know i've, I've, I've finished yeah. one playthrough i've got a good save i did it on a on the space station bunker thing where where you know your main base in space uh and and it blows up and you get a joke ending where it turns out that you have blown up the space station and it's like oh and now uh the commander she just floats endlessly in space still pretty annoyed about what you did and then you, the credits just go <laughs> and it's like three seconds of credit speeding you through it's like oh. to see this Treat yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's amazing. So there's an ending for every single letter of the alphabet. So that's what you've been up to this week then, is it, Nero Automata? That, that, that's, I mean, on, honestly, there's so many people who will be listening to this who have played it and have a really strong feelings about it. It was, you know, you you remember at the time how lauded it was. Gosh, about yeah. six years ago, something like that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, good. And, and again, like you feel my like... my is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Six yeah, years no, back. Yeah. I've just finished Dark Souls. It all went downhill when Breath of the Wild came out, didn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right then. Um, so there's something else going on this week. Uh, well, there's quite a lot of things in the in the world in general, but there's one big media event, isn't there, that uh, I guess it would be remiss yeah, to ignore. Yeah, I guess, I guess it's... Um, I, I guess it's kind of based on what the game awards yeah that's right do. Yeah. they've but done like a pastiche like, of it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm i can't wait to see how it goes but there's, there's like a an awards thing for um visual entertainment yeah. movies and so on yeah. non, um, non-interactive video games as i like to call them it's yeah. called the uh oscars yeah that's right yeah. it's like the nascars yeah. yeah 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 so it's a racing award show yeah um, where the host gets punched good, yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, actually, no, it was a slap. Oh, it was a slap. It was a slap last year. Sorry about that. <laughs> Speaking listening. of slaps, yeah. I don't know if you saw the slapping fest that was going on, professional slapping, where you slap <laughs> each other in a ring. No. Uh, there was someone who, who got slapped really hard and was like, whew, whew, that was the slap, and then got to do their slap back. This was women's slapping. I, I just saw it on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a professional thing. It's an yeah, actual yeah, professional yeah, thing. Like a it's totally broadcast fun. quality it's thing. Totally fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, unless I fell down some weird rabbit hole, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Um, and then she she takes her one back, and you see, you, you see their soul leave their body as yeah. they are just, they're out, That's, they're out, and that... then they try and get up and walk, and then they do a gamble. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. You know, I, I, sorry. No, 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 no. That's, <laughs> the I Oscars. Mean, the Oscars. Yeah. So I mean, there's been some interesting stuff, but uh, I mean, for me, the only thing that I saw that I was surprised about was uh, well, in a positive way as Brandon Fraser has been nominated for an Oscar, which is great. 
Because you know what, I would. Uh, this is this is stupid because I know I know everyone feels the same, um, but I wish nothing but amazing things for him. Like I I think yeah. what a brilliant human being. He's like Keanu levels. For he me, is I like think. Keanu levels. A lot of, yeah, a lot yeah. of people love it. You know, I started watching this show, Doom Patrol, and I didn't yeah. realize how much of a big role he has. He's like kind of okay. and like, you know, he's kind of like a Suicide Squad type thing, a DC show. And, and yeah. he plays a, a robot, man. Yeah. And he's like one of the main characters. And it's he great. Was, he, he was also meant to be in, um, he was also meant to be in uh, that Batman film that got cancelled, wasn't he? He was going to be a villain. Yeah. Which is a shame because, yeah. you know, I think it had, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, one of the original Batman. Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton, yeah. he was going to be in it as Batman. Yeah. Uh, and there was going to be Batgirl. And yeah. I, and then I, they got cancelled, yeah. I, I, just, I, I just wish I could get a glimpse of that because just Brandon Fraser as a, as a villain yeah. as so well. He, so do you know what I mean? He's up for an Oscar, isn't he? But there's a, there's a sort of yeah. bit of a Wired uh, Productions cult classic so, so yeah. for those that are uninitiated, why don't we let the people know what it is? Because we know that anyone listening from Wired Towers will be interested in. Yeah, we, we we've spoken about this uh, we have. this movie before because one, it made a massive impact on every single one of our staff that has watched it, um, and we also dabbled in. Can we make? Could could we make a game out of this? Could could a game exist for for this? But uh, it, it's it's nice to see that um, RRR uh, has been nominated for uh, an Oscar for best original song with uh, Natu Natu, um, and Steve Steve is a massive Steve in the office at Wide is a massive fan of this film. He is the is the guy. He, he wouldn't stop talking about it on Twitter, and I was like, "What is this all about?" I was yeah. like, I'll check it out, and it's like, "No, okay, he's right, all, he's right. Yeah. amazing." <laughs> and there was a, I, I saw an amazing clip. Uh, I, I think it was yesterday, maybe, um, of um, the director and the uh, composer of RRR. Um, uh, he, they they were approached by James Cameron, so also <sighs> up for an Oscar for for Avatar, um, and. It's just three minutes non-stop of James Cameron gushing and breaking down what was so brilliant about the film, talking about the soundtrack, um, you know, how he does things versus how he does it. And it's it's, it's just really amazing because they're like, oh, my God, it's James Cameron. James Cameron, <laughs> him, him from but James Cameron is also like, oh, my God. It's, yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> really wicked. Yeah. So yeah. there we go. I think you've sort of um, we've taken it as our own. At the Wide Apple yeah. podcast, even though RR is not officially uh, affiliated to us at all, which would be nice. I mean, that means by proxy, yeah. we'd be nominated for an Oscar. But yeah. yeah, so good luck to our friends who don't know Massive us. Respect RRR, for RRR, my favorite. Every, all yeah, the team at RRR. My favorite yeah. parasocial movie relationship there. Um, we had a nice <laughs> little preamble here, but there's quite a lot to go through, uh, you know, propaganda wise. It's been a stat week. And actually, if you remember last week, I've been looking forward to this one. So let's get straight into it. Jingle, please. Wired propaganda. I always say jingle, please. Like I'm not the one that presses the button for the jingles. I don't know why I do that, to be honest, because it's just yeah. me. I don't want to, you know, just to dispel any rumor. It is also, me. The, the 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 descriptor of a jingle makes it sound like it's going to be like a, you know, sort of <laughs> like, like a happy it. affair. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, 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 exactly. I don't know what like the lovely sort of, juxtaposition. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what's like the barbed wire version of a, a jingle? Yeah. Uh, Play so, the spiky. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the destroyer. So, uh, what was going on in the world of wire this week? Because there's quite a few bits. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the first thing is um, we mentioned this last week, but the the demo uh, for uh, Bolt Bork uh, from the Falconeer Chronicles yeah, yeah. that is. Uh, currently live on steam builder fest, builder fest yeah. um by the time this goes live you've got still got you still got a chunk of days uh to, to download and get involved it's on until uh the 30th of jan which is great um now when you play it do give feedback as well because um we've mentioned what a beast uh thomas Sala is right yeah and on day one i, I think he did 120 changes based on immediate feedback he's been getting <laughs> yeah. feedback left right and center implementing it straight away so people can 
C- he must have two monitors is, up. One, one watching. I think he's got eight. Yeah, I think he's got eight. Yeah, like, like it's the just Oracle fed into his or brain. The architect from the Matrix. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, but you know, he he's taking all the feedback on board. He's making improvements rapidly, um, and you know, from this so far, so much useful feedback has come in. You know, it's helping refine the control scheme. You know, even um, how yeah. how the mouse operates and so on. Um, so, you know, if, if you play, not only do you get to play this amazing game ahead of time, um, but you also can, can provide feedback and help, uh, Thomas make it even better, which, you know, it, it sounds like such a cliche when people say, Oh, please submit your feedback. But like, seriously, follow him on Twitter. And you can see yeah. that he's yeah. addressing everything that he, that he can in, in the balance of he things. He's literally so. right. This doesn't mean anything to anybody apart from me and Aaron right now, because it's live, but right this second, he is streaming right now. Yeah. He's literally just streaming the game right now, live on the Steam page. Yeah. And he's just really, like, really recently just put a patch notes up. Been like, look, guys, hey, everybody. Sorry, I've had tunnel vision, lol. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I mean. So, so, so you know, if you want to have a, a chance to play a game and help sh- literally shape the game, the same as you shape the world, just go and, go and have a look, honestly. And you can see the effort that he puts in and... Yeah, what what a thing! So you can have a chance to play Bulwark early, and and honestly, you detect something, you put it, you have a chance to really just change the way that this game is. So there we go. Yeah, fantastic, Thomas. I cannot, but I literally cannot believe. I thought, let me see when the last patch was, and he's he's right there. Such a workhorse. Yeah. What what a legend! All right, well there we go, and that's <laughs> that's up until. Um, January Jan 30th. The 30th, yeah, exactly. So if you're listening yeah, to yeah, this, yeah. if you're listening to the podcast new and fresh, you got to the end of the weekend. If you're listening to this in the past on a podcast binge, hey, don't worry about it. <laughs> you, you, yeah. You'll be able to but play. But it might be out you know. by now. It depends when you're listening to this. Just go and have a look in it. Yeah. I don't know. Listen to this in the future. Just <laughs> let us know on Twitter. I'm always interested to say, oh, oh just listen to episode 20, you know, in the year 2023 yeah. or something like yeah. that. So let us know. Yeah. All right. What else have we got going on yeah. at Wyatt uh, I would, I, I would like to inform you that it was actually Barmy Aunt Boomerang. It's like, yes, yes. Watch the next episode. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so uh there's there's very exciting news there's very exciting news and it's it's quite um there's there's a heartfelt moment in this as well so um it's it's a happy story so uh there's a new wired office dog now uh-huh. um her name is leah yeah. um and she's a chocolate brown retriever um and you know i put this down as a joke but she's going to be working in hr um <laughs> oh, oh. But she's a, a very tiny little puppy getting to grasps with the world and being a puppy but um wired uh so leo um leo used to uh have uh, a dog previously and the name was bella and she was the the wired office dog and a mascot and um you know she she had very good innings um but you know yeah. most beautiful amazing things do have to come to an end yeah um uh but you know it's been it's been some time since there was an office dog and you know we now have leah the chocolate brown retriever and uh you know th- um there's a bit of peeing over the office but that's all right yeah. you know yeah. <laughs> training inches and everyone and what i like is uh did you ever watch uh free men and a little baby yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Oh, it's like lady, that yeah. Except, yeah. except with you know 30 people uh dog trying to training. communally <laughs> raise a dog yeah that's great yeah yeah, yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. Any, anyone that's it's had a, a sort of new puppy would know that if they could have the, the help of 28 people <laughs> they'd take yeah. it yeah, yeah, that, yeah that's yeah. great I was quickly looking I was thinking of course Leo's roots are firmly in, in Italy and I was like yeah. Bella that's a, an Italian Bella yeah yeah, yeah. So I was, like, so I, was well, qu- I, was, a... I was quickly just googling what, what, does, Bella, what does Leo mean in, in, in Italian mm. and it, it means like gentle relaxed weary so it, it is so it's there we go. There you go. Can't spell Italian without Leah either. There we go. Sorry, don't d- listen. Let's forget I said that. Because it's just that was bad, wasn't it? If you can, that's true. I was looking at it and I was like, is it because of Italian? Do you know, I'm not even I'm not even mad at that. That was quick. Thanks very much. Cheers that's very much. Quick. But let's move that's on quick. quickly before yeah, like we start yeah, thinking yeah. about it too much and realize it was quite weak. <laughs> we've 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 mentioned this before, but we're gonna be off to PAX in Boston. Um in 
When is it? March. March. It's in March. March. It's in March. March. Yeah, it's, it's in March. We're going to be there. We haven't announced what games we're going to be showing yet. That announcement will be coming. There's going to be some very interesting uh, things to get your mitts on. Um, and we're going to be taking some developers as per usual. So yeah. you can meet the people that make Perfect. these games uh, and have a direct conversation. And again, provide feedback on what you play everything is listened to um so that's going to be a fun show i wonder i wonder i wonder jake if we'll do another live in person episode well I, unfortunately I, you're I, gonna say you're not going i i am on a holiday i'm actually on I, I i i never go do you know in my in, in my entire Betrayal. i know maybe i should like um I, i'll be at like a theme park uh so maybe yeah. i should like facetime in yeah, yeah, yeah. Put, put you on the big projector. Oh, I, I might, yeah, yeah like, it, like on a water slide. Oh, why oh, don't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in the Netherlands visiting the second largest sort of theme park in Europe. It's called Efteling. And it's the, um, the giant theme park that's kind of based on fairy tales, not that one. Uh, and, you know, you can see like all the stories like Cinderella, not that one, Sleeping Beauty, not that one, you know, but it's, it's, it's the big one. The, it's the traditional, the, 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 the traditional the stories. Ones. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, not, yeah, it's yeah. not Disneyland. The, the darker, the darker yeah, ones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I've just been curious. Um, my partner's really big into like, you know, whatever Disneyland and that. And I was like, well, okay, that's okay. Well, why don't we have a look at something else? Just to, okay. You know, the, uh, so, I'm so, so happy you've mentioned this. Yeah. So happy. Imagine. Are, are, are you? Are you? Are you both like? Do, do you? Are you like theme park fanatics, or is this? Is this? A, is this a? I'm uh, like. I'm, listen. I'm, I was going to say a kink, but I mean, is it a hobby? <laughs> it's not a kink. <laughs> I, I, would, I would say that it's like yeah, like yeah. I'm quite into rides and stuff. But I, yeah. I like I, what I love about it is I'm I'm quite a cool, calm, collected guy. But I'm really terrified of roller coasters. But I like same. going on them. On per, do you know same. what I mean? So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a great You have thing. to have the fear, otherwise you don't enjoy it, right? Yeah, the fear like, is the enjoyment, isn't it? So, yeah. The defeating the fear, which is brilliant. And I've never been in, I've never really been to like a, a really, really big one like that. So I'm, I'm really excited mm. to go. So, yeah. I, no packs. Um, Sorry. I'm, I'm, so, so in February, yeah. in February, which is coming up very soon, I'm going to Disneyland Paris. And it's the first time I will ever have been to a Disney. This podcast, there we go. P for I, I'm very, I'm parks. very excited. Yeah. Very excited. Hell I, yeah. I've, I've done the virtual park tours with like watching some YouTubers be like, oh, and this is the shop. I'm like, oh, a shop. Um, <laughs> on, showing on, the Star Wars bit. Um, <laughs> honestly, there's this YouTube channel called Tim <clears throat> Tracker, which is on in our house. Tim Tracker. Yeah. It's daily yeah. vlogs around like Disney World and that. And it's literally yeah. the minutia that you just literally think, who cares, mate? Goes into the shop in Halloween and goes, this is a cake. This is $17. This, and then I'm, at first I was like, why are we on this? 28 hours later or whatever. I'm like, do you know what would be good before bed? Bit of Tim Trucker. Just put him on. <laughs> he's, he's, he's like a lava lamp for a person. He's got this monotone yeah. voice. He, he's consistent is what he is. A daily vlog. He's, you know where he is all the time. He's at some theme park looking at overpriced stuff or going, yeah. yeah. And like, you know, he, he, he knows about things that you just think, who cares? But you eventually start to care, and he we, touches your heart and mind, and there we are. We we, we have a th we have a thing like that, um, where it's it's that why would you watch this? Um, but then it just sort of bleeds into your life as like a point of relaxation, and yeah. we'll just, like just any reality out. TV show, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Um, Milf Manor. It's yeah. it's. I've heard, I've heard. I can't, I can't force myself to go. I've just got I've out watching it. The Circle, uh, the latest season of The Circle. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I, I need a bit of a break. Yeah. But um, there's, um, there's a really cool Japanese woman. Her yeah. name is uh, Kinoshita Yuka. Um, and what she does is just eat an obscene amount of food. Yeah, this is a huge a lovely thing, Japanese it? Korean food. Sometimes she cooks things herself. Sometimes she just orders lots of burgers in, and it's like it's a huge thing, isn't it? People watch it yeah. live as well on Twitch and all yeah. that. But yeah, and she's got two really cool cats. One of them is called Lon. Um, That's a great you know. name for a cat, that to be honest. Yeah, Lon and yeah. Leah, two cool uh, pet names actually, back to back. Well, I'll tell you what, yeah. we'll circle back to this in a little bit for our question time <laughs> segment, and I'll see what I'll see what weird recommendations <laughs> we've got. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Look, look. So no packs, unfortunately, for me because of theme parks. We've been playing theme parks. But that's not the only stop on the, the Wild Unplugged tour. No, 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 no. Spring, is it? Yeah. 
yeah, what else? Yeah. What else is it? It's still spring, isn't it? I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so um, Wired um, are going to be off to GDC and Dice as well, yeah. um, which they're they're always um, they're always good industry moments to be a part of. You'll see, um, you know, a GDC particularly will be covered more than Dice, I guess, uh, by yeah. media. So you'll see some stuff coming out there, some announcements, some cool talks um media gets to meet developers and do really insightful interviews and so on um leo leo and some of the wide gang are going to be over there um talking to developers looking at new potential games um and right now because because we are early ahead of time if you are a developer and you're working on something very special and you're like i like those people who can't really do an australian accent and you're interested in booking a meeting with the, the folks at Wired, then 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 get in touch. Um, and and there's time to meet at Dice and GDC. If you want to pitch an RRR game, then yeah, we've got yeah, yeah. The, we've got the means. Uh, Dice is in February towards the end, and GDC is just before PAX East, actually. So yeah, in yeah. in sort of reverse reading order, there we got it. Um, that's cool. Dice, I I quite like watching some of the talks that get put on youtube there i watched one recently with like hideo kojima and Guillermo del toro about you know death stranding but i watched it like three years after death stranding so you know it's cool for stuff that's like good that. when you find things like that though yeah you know like yeah. little insights into like older yeah, stuff yeah. Yeah, yeah cool isn't it so that's it right wired on tour spring 2023 edition three major events the dice summit gdc which is the game developers conference for those that don't know uh-huh. pax east in boston massachusetts baby it's all going down all right Something interesting. I saw some interesting hashtag on the socials, which I think is our final bit of propaganda. This, uh... yeah, yeah, this is uh, this is worth bringing up. Uh, we mm-hmm. spoke about gory, cuddly carnage quite a lot, and we're going to talk more about it down the line. We've had the developers on before. We'll have them on again. Um, still, we spoke about them last week with the googly eyes dev stuff that they were doing for fun. Um, but um, one thing that we're doing now is if you if you are down and dandy with a doodle. Very good. Or or not so down and dandy with a doodle. If you can, you know, do something interestingly uh, creative on paint, Microsoft Paint Microsoft or paint. similar. Or on shop, a other piece ones of are paper. Available. Take a pencil and a piece of paper and jot something down. Um, the team are on the hunt for um, including cool doodles in the game as graffiti. So if you have ever wanted to have something in a video game, um, and you're just a fan of games, or if you're an artist, you can submit uh, your dandy doodles, or not dandy doodles, dandy dontals, I don't know. Um, yeah. And no, well, I don't know. Yeah, I like but you can, you can submit them, you can yeah. submit them to the team, and uh, they'll be put in for consideration to be memorialized in game as graffiti across the different landscapes that Gore will be traveling through. Um, there are some, there are two different ways that you can do this. You can do this on uh, Twitter by uh, posting your image to at wide P. Uh, P for per, um, and um, the hashtag Gory Graffiti. Nice and simple. Or if you're more into Discord, you can join uh, the Angry Demon Discord uh, channel. Um, and if you pop that into uh, Arts and Screenshots section under Discord, you'll be put in for consideration. That's really so cool, isn't that? That's cool. I, and I, I was uh, I was talking to I was talking to Leo. Leo just recently got back from Thailand, right? Yeah. And Thailand has become one of my favorite places in the world. It's absolutely magical. And uh, what we were talking about, um, just 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 to uh, compare experiences, I guess, mm-hmm. yeah. was uh, in Thailand. In Thailand, um, you get what can only be called uh, a butt gun, which yeah. <laughs> which is a a, a hose. A powerful, powerful mighty hose yeah. by a toilet, which you use to like a bidet, sort of, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you use it to to, to freshen to up, mm-hmm. to cleanse, uh, because you know that the, the systems don't take uh, toilet paper so kindly. Oh, I see. So you know, yeah, yeah. use it to cleanse. I was thinking that you know what might be good is if I, I I can't draw, I can't draw. I'm terrible at drawing, but I'm tempted just to do a nice little uh, butt gun uh, tribute. For our time That's in Thailand. A, we went uh, in Thailand together, by the way. Yeah. It wasn't a romantic break. Yeah, from our separate, from our separate <laughs> times with the butt gun in Thailand. Yeah, we like united by the butt gun. Like, even I, I can't draw. I'm not really, really not not good at like that. But honestly, I just thought, I'll have a crack at that. It'd be really, really cool. I'm, I'll see if I can find... Crack I'll, see, <laughs> right, I'm gonna see, I'll see if I can do something unplugged related. See if I can yeah. find some sort of boomerang 
Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'll, see, I'll, see, I'll see what I can immortalize. Um, but yeah, that's really, really cool. So yeah, just as a reminder then, once more for everybody, if you uh, want to contribute your graffiti, you can kind of do so. Uh, digital graffiti, of course. Uh, I think graffiti is illegal, so I'm not condoning that officially. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at Wired P for productivity on Twitter with the hashtag Gory Graffiti, or like Aaron says, you can just jump straight into the Angry Demon Discord. And there's a handy little section that you can contribute a demon offering there, sacrifice to the yeah. lords above, below, and, whatever. And, and if if you if you happen to be the actual Banksy, and you want to do a virtual Banksy, we won't tell anyone. We won't tell anyone who you are. We won't tell we won't anybody. Tell anyone who you are. Yeah, yeah. You see, we won't try and track you. We won't try and trace you. No, absolutely not. We won't like look online about if you're a member of Massive Attack or whatever. It's all totally <laughs> secret. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <a teardrop. laughs> there you go um yeah. so all right brilliant that's quite a lot of propaganda this week to be honest and so like yeah a little treat for the people who are listening in a contemporary setting check out that bulwark demo right okay great there's a lot of stuff going on so much so that we still don't have a sort of cool jingle for the question time section of the podcast. but i think what i'd like to know is and listen i know what i'm about to ask is like opening the portal into hell but I'm just asking everybody <laughs> to behave themselves, all right? I just, you know, gave you a window into my life. And I said that if I want to relax, right, before mm. bed on YouTube, other platforms are available. Just pick safer work ones for now, please. What weird channel that you kind of think, oh, who watches this? Is it just us? <laughs> Do you say Tim Tracker, like I was on about? There's, I also found somebody who's literal Super Nintendo World opened, right? kind of recently mm. old, in Tokyo there's a, there's a guy who just goes around looking at all of the stuff in the shops I think his name is like yep. Tokyo Disney Explorer or some shit like that can you let us know your kind of feel like it's super obscure but actually have lots of followers YouTube weird channels that you relax to or unwind to you know maybe maybe it's not before bed maybe it's on your way to work and you've got a long commute and you're just like Do you know what I'll catch up You'll have a little a day in the life of vlog. Maybe like there's a channel that just makes like origami or something. I don't know. I'm interested. Could be like abroad in Japan. There we go. Well. Stuff like a travel yeah, yeah, yeah. travel vlog. That's a thing. Yeah. yeah. I um I can't watch them too much because it makes me feel a bit envious that I'm not out there exploring the world. So if I stick it to Disney World, I can kind of like it kind of tempers my jealousy by going, how much for a cookie dough ball? Twenty five dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's much more palatable in yen. You're like, oh yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah you just go fifty thousand yen. Money. What's that? Yeah, yeah exactly. You yeah. just go. So, so that's the question I posed to you this week, right? What's your obscure favorite YouTube channel or maybe Twitch streamer that does something unusual? Um, Aaron mentioned some someone um, who just eats an excessive amount of food. That is an incredibly popular pastime on Twitch. These mukbang stream things, right? Mukbang. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. So we've been asked a question this week, um, which uh, if you want to answer this one instead, you probably easier to do it, isn't it? Probably a lot a bit easier. DK Chrissy from Twitter asks, favorite OSTs? So I suppose that's to everybody. So if you want to answer that instead, it's probably easier. You're probably more passionate about that than like random yeah. shop YouTubers. But what's your i mean mine's 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 kind of boring in it because i go on about it all the time but i absolutely love the donkey kong country soundtrack and i recently played tropical freeze over christmas and it just makes i get the endorphins that pump through my system yeah they, they they did get david wise back for that right yeah, and that's, um, yeah, he's, he's, yeah, the they boys, got us both back yeah i think well, I, yeah, th yeah, I think yeah. he came back to do i think grant kirkup did a bit of like bonus level -y music but, yeah, but yeah, david yeah. wise did, did, did like you know most of it that's that's one that I really like. Uh, Sonic Adventure Battle Two has a hell of a soundtrack. Um, okay, but do you know what? All Zelda's obviously, but uh, Stardew Valley. Considering that that was one guy who also did the, you know, coding, art, story, mechanics, kind of smashed it out. But so yeah. I, they're my favorites, sort of. I think. I'll tell you, I'll tell you one note that was of note. You know, sometimes when a soundtrack pops out you're playing the game right you've got loads of stuff going on you've got a great visual element you're having a really fun time in the gameplay so when the music that should really be sat in the background catches your ear and you go huh well i was watching my partner playing um pokemon violet right mm -hmm. and i was like whoa 
this is this is catchy. This T Toby Fox. It's Toby Fox. Yeah, it's yeah. His melodies are kind of yes. Yeah. So so and and then I found myself, you know, go make a drink in the kitchen, and I'm still humming away because yeah. they're quite short loops as well. So you hear them for a long time. <laughs> you hear them a lot, you know. But they, they're earworms. So, and, and that was like the first yeah. time in a while where I've gone, oh, hang on a minute, that's really good. What what comes to mind for you when you think of this? I I, I think for me. I would have to say anything from Zelda, which is a cop out and saying absolutely, slightly no, boring, but I, it deserves it. And okay. the reason I say this as well is because um, I once did um, a one off charity performance with the Philharmonic Orchestra yeah. uh, that was recorded for a charity thing. Um, which was uh, the same people who did the 25th anniversary Zelda Symphony. things and so on. Yeah. That, to get to that point to do that, it was conversations across three years to make that happen, to make the wow. timings align, yeah. to you know make sure that it was going to hit in mm -hmm. the right way. Um, and I will never forget the recording day for that. And um, it was incredible. I think, wow. you yeah. know, you walk in and you're like, oh, my God, after three years of conversations, this is actually going to happen. Crazy, yeah. And they kick off the first notes and you're like oh my god like i'm getting goosebumps just talking about it right now Crazy. but the um yeah. the, the reason why that sticks so much is because um <laughs> the night before the night yeah. before recording um uh <laughs> the guy the guy we're working with is like oh, yeah yeah I'll, I'll send you through um i'll send you through the score and then you've got everything you need for the uh the people to play in the ensemble yeah. uh i was like okay cool um, and then it gets to, and then they, they were based in the U S uh, so it got to 6 PM at my desk. It comes through. I send it through to the guy at the Philharmonic and say, that's everything you need. And he comes back and says, Aaron, I'm really sorry. Um, but what we have here is the conductor score. Um, and the conductor score is essentially, um, you have a page and on each line will be what each instrument is playing at that point. Now, if you are, a, a, let's say you are a, a violinist, right? Or a cellist or whatever, mm -hmm. you are playing and you'd have to go, do, 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 It's not feasible. So I sat there for the entire night copying and pasting every single individual line from each individual instrument from each of the five pieces of music into yeah. its own thing. I think I was working till like 2 a.m. I sent it across and I was like, oh, my God, it's done done um and then i had to go home uh and then have to be in london for uh, 7 a.m the next morning <laughs> so i arrived and i was yeah. like oh my god what are you doing? And then it, and then it happened and it's totally worth it yeah. and uh actually because it, it felt like you yeah so it's your favorite because you felt like you wrote it at that point You're so yeah, yeah i was like oh yeah it's all me yeah, it's my masterpiece when you when you yeah. were listening to that you were thinking every line of this it's because of my hard work. Like I copied and pasted that. <laughs> <laughs> Someone else's work, I copied and pasted that. Um, no, but um, it, it was an absolutely amazing, magical moment. Uh, they're actually available to watch on YouTube as well. The um, Philharmonic posted each of the uh, recordings on their YouTube channel as well. Yeah. Um, great, great and things that, yeah. They, they do a, a really amazing version of Ballad of the Windfish from um, Link's, uh, Awakening? Link's, Link's Awakening. Yeah. Um, and it was so funny to me because this happened this happened so long ago um but then it got to nintendo um it was a almost release window for the remake of link's awakening on switch and then the views on that thing just went <laughs> like <laughs> honestly it just grew Crazy. so fast and comments from like you know five minutes ago it's like oh my god i can't wait for this game to come out this yeah. is such an amazing version sorry i love it but anyway um aside from zelda uh, what i'm gonna say is uh celeste as well i think the celeste oh, soundtrack ooh. is absolutely wonderful ooh. and yeah. i also want to point out that uh today as recording but we'll just say this week uh it's celeste's fifth anniversary wow. of release yeah i was, I was um, funnily enough i was thinking about celeste today um yeah. it's no secret that uh, for those at home, and just in case you're not familiar, me and Aaron both in our day jobs work in the games industry. And, and uh, yeah, you know, we both get to see cool projects that aren't kind of out yet whilst they're in yeah. the works. If, if it's something that's, you know, that Wired would be akin to when they're at Dice, you know, something like that, right? I saw a game and I looked at it and I was getting major Celeste, like, you know, I was looking at it and I was like, oh, this reminds me of Celeste. I, thought, I wonder how that game's getting on. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah but I think I think Google yeah, yeah, yeah. that would have been like, oh, you know, wow, yeah, what a uh, what a game, and the Got soundtrack it. for that is, yeah, I think about my favorite OSTs all the time, Donkey Kong's top of the pile. But I, do you know what I love is the, the one that's in my head the most. I don't necessarily know if this is always the best. Like, um, my girlfriend's platform. always singing the flipping Brooklyn Nine Nine, like little did <laughs> and she'll just do it. it like whatever. That's a new one. That that's what I mean. Is it the best? Yeah. Absolutely not. But it's like it haunts this house. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. Um, so do you know what it, the, the biggest musical ear for me? I love the Green Hill Zone theme from Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah. That yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. me and you talking about when we saw the Sonic movie and it does the big like uh, yeah the, the orchestral one. Oh wow. So there we go. So yeah, yeah, that's a really, really great question as well. So thank you to DK Chrissy. And uh, yeah, if you don't want to answer questions about weird YouTube stuff and you want to let us know which <laughs> not even OST, but which particular song, is there a moment, you know, whether it's like, I don't know, Genova's theme or whatever in uh, Final Fantasy Seven or Ballad of the Windfish, Lon Lon Ranch or whatever, just let us know. Rainbow Road. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, great. Yeah. So <sighs> video games they're great aren't they uh they're, they're all right let's they're have a look right. at what's going on in, in in the news regarding these crazy crazy things no all right that was a bit of a loaded segue there that was a really dramatic noise it sounded like a gong it was. Boom. <laughs> sorry i was like yeah but yeah, audio listeners welcome to my shaolin like, temple <laughs> yeah aaron banged the incredibly ornate gong that looks brilliant yeah it was my uh from thailand <laughs> <laughs> yeah um that sorry that was a very very heavy and thick sea of thieves pencil with my sea of thieves notebook that very really good. gave me yeah um banging against my uh whatever that is yeah yeah what are they called the the mouth guard thing or anyway whatever noise guard so noise there's guard been loads thing. going on in the news this week and yet again we find ourselves at the cusp of uh an event <laughs> we record these <laughs> midweek <laughs> typically we're always on the sort of well, wrong or right, it depends. Wrong for reporting's sake, right for we're, we haven't yet enjoyed it. Um, so I guess, should we just... Quickly, should, should we cover that first? Should we, should we mention that first? Just because yeah. I, I yeah, imagine yeah, people yeah. will expect it to be brought up and just so we can temper expectations. Um, it's kicking off in a bit. It's kicking off. We are <laughs> At the time of recording, we are 90 minutes away from the Xbox Developer Direct, which is uh, a sort of, don't call it a direct, uh, direct from from xbox uh yeah. where they're going to be showing well not all of their developers because let's be honest with you they've got a lot of them but there's going to be some deep dives into some of xbox and bethesda's biggest upcoming titles uh which is this is uh, correct me if i'm wrong Aaron, this is the first one of this this xbox developer direct it's the first yes. of its kind right yeah okay. cool. yeah which is, which is kind of like a state statement of intent of how, how they want to do this moving forward right because Within this, a second one has already been announced, right? Yeah. Um, and, and that is all um, a, a very bespoke version of this for Starfield, which is coming not too not too mm. long away. I don't yeah. think a, a date's been set on that yet, but I think they said roughly a month after or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so Starfield gets its own dedicated one. Now, here's something that I, I read that was was interesting, and I'm not now. I guess this is how we're going to kick things off, right? Like the Xbox Developer Direct by all intents and purposes, has mentioned the studios that are taking place in this. So the Xenomax, uh, you know, the, the studio um, behind Elder Scrolls Online. Mm -hmm. um, turn 10? Uh, turn 10, yeah, the, the thoughts are motorsport Arcane? people. Arcane Austin, who were responsible for Bethesda's Redfall, that sort of Massachusetts yes. set vampire game. And then no less than Mojang, or maybe it's Mojang uh, Studios, oh, yeah. you know, the people who made that that game, Minecraft. So there's Minecraft Legends, which is on the way uh, very shortly. So although it's not specifically been said that that is the game, I think there's a 99% chance that it's going to be the upcoming Minecraft Legends. However, yeah. however, here's one thing I will say, right? Xenomax is, is there with, you know, what, what everyone's had to believe the Elder Scrolls Online. But it was announced, right, that this show, this has just kind of been coming in through dribs and drabs over Twitter, which, may I say, is not really the greatest way to sort of give information. Yeah. Aaron Greenberg and, and people are just, you know, replying mm. to fans' tweets. So we know that the show is going to last 43 minutes, but we also know, and here's the kind of point I'm trying to make, there's a separate Elder Scrolls Online showcase taking place right after it, literally directly after it. 
Oh. So is that kind of like a Nintendo Treehouse kind of thing where... That's cool. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? I like that. So, so is it going to be that there's going to be maybe a mention or something and then we just go into it? No. There's also, which it might be happening right now at time recording, or it certainly was not too long ago. I think Xbox On was streaming oh, yeah. some new Halo maps or something. Yeah, they were doing something today, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So interesting, isn't I, it? I, I like the idea of, you know, commanding a moment with nice fun smattering of events right of, of things that interest you it's like you can go over here and watch this you yeah. can learn about core chunky updates here if you are really into elder scrolls online there'll be a, a, an xbox tree yeah yeah exactly like that. yeah, yeah. It, it, it's like you know like the, the, the thing i'm looking at right this second i'm looking at twitter and i'm seeing loads of val you know verified accounts replying and mm. one of them is In Exile Entertainment, which is, uh, you know, Brian Fargo's company, the creators of Wasteland, mm. Wasteland 3, yeah. and Bard's Tale. Uh, you know, everything these days, I'm like, is that him? But, um, yeah, we're really interested to see how they're handling this. Uh, one thing that's quite funny at the time of recording, and we're going to see ourselves, is despite the fact that they've said, hello, we're going to be looking at four games here, and then they've shown the studios, everyone is still expecting things that aren't, mentioned mm. which is half in part to the fact that you know we have the steve jobs one more thing mic drop moment that everybody likes to do yeah. and, and you know continues to do um so nintendo do it as well nintendo love a bit of that don't mm. they yeah e even sony did it they announced what did, yeah. what have they shown off that way in that method they they use that to to showcase that um marvel wolverine if i remember rightly um yes, so so yeah, so what so what we do know for a fact is Xenomax Studios are out. We do know that there's an Elder Scrolls event right after, dedicated direct, which is exactly yeah. what um Xenomax are uh, doing. Uh sorry, exactly what um Bethesda are doing with Starfield later. So I mean, yeah, yeah um I, I'm I'm quite looking forward to this. So let, let's say we just split it in quarters, four studios, 43 minutes each. We're gonna get a 10 minute little what, a little run through of each game or an update. Are, are, you, are you gonna be watching this? I, I, I'm going to check it out. Um, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to check it out because um, I'm I'm kind of just interested if, in the format. Yeah. Um, and you know, if if they do, because let's be honest, this this is kind of setting the the stamp, the putting the foot in the ground, right? Of this is what you can expect moving forward. And if they do end it with one more thing or two more things. That would be expected moving forward forever. So it's going to be interesting mm -hmm. to see if, um, very good, you know, yeah. if they stick to it and they're like, you know, when we yeah. say we're going to talk about four games, we're only going to talk about four games. Um, but That's Nintendo, very... Nintendo have fallen foul about this before because they're like, oh, we're doing a Nintendo Direct and we're talking about titles that are coming in the first half of 2020, and then they're like you know, start off the game, which is, this is a game coming in 2023. And you're like, what the hell? <laughs> I, I thought you yeah. said, yeah, you know, this is a yeah, whole, yeah, yeah. it's a whole I, I like that. Don't get me wrong. It sets your expectations in check, but. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think you're dead right. And so actually there's quite a lot more to this than maybe meets the eye because you're right. You know, what we're seeing is the unveiling of a new um, sort of format of presentation. And mm. one thing that I've observed over the last few months, and EA are really leading the charge of this. And I've got to say, and, I, and I'm wondering what the people at home have to say about this as well, but um, the communications and the run-up of games is, is, is moving a lot further away from the, the game's going to be out in 2032. And it's a lot yeah. closer to, you know, EA, EA have now officially made the thing of saying, we're not going to announce eight games weeks. until eight weeks. Eight weeks. And yeah. then and, and that is a really nice way because people's attention spans these days and the way that we consume news and stuff like that, you know, dropping a trailer for something like, I don't know, let's say Skyrim 2, Elder Scrolls. <laughs> you know, when mm. was that Elder Scrolls trailer? Three years ago, right? Yeah. If that was a new IP, no one would remember, would they? No one, you know, uh, and, and now we've got Starfield before. before uh, how, how many years is Elder Scrolls away? So what did they do that for, right? Well, it was to get a little bit of, you know, news at the time and, and to see if things are taking a little bit of a stance away from that now and see if it, um, what we see tonight, I hope, is going to be some juicy info about games and then release dates for all of them. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, in this case, we know when Red Falls coming out. It's the, the first half of this year. We just don't know when. And then it gives everyone really good things. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So yeah, cool. Uh, we'll see what happens. Um, 
Uh, uh, let me just ask you this quick yes or no question. Aye. I'm not asking you for a big yes. prediction. <laughs> the question is, do you think they're going to stick to four games or not? And don't let, don't let the heart no. lead the head here. And that's right. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. No, um, but if they do, no one should be disappointed. Yeah. I'm going to serve you three courses at this restaurant and then you get four. You should be happy. You shouldn't yeah. go, huh? Oh, hang on a minute. It's like, it's, it's like if you do, if you, you know, if you get that moment to go somewhere fancy and, you know, sometimes they'll bring you a little surprise course a little as a pal- of like lemon, lemon sorbet, sorbet. or something. Uh, yeah. And you're like, oh, what a nice surprise. I was not expecting that. Yeah. But, but then, but then if nice you went surprise. next time and you didn't get it, you know. Yeah, uh, you'd be like, it's a new room for not going back there. Yeah. They forgot my uh, my yeah, then, surprise yeah. line. It's, it's it's a privilege. Yeah. So there we go. Yeah. That's it. Xbox. So based sadness. It's very good. That's a good username. That. Um, I I I reckon <laughs> I'm gonna stick to the four, but I hope I'm wrong. So that's that. Yeah. So that's one bit of news this week. Uh, Huge. And yeah. It's on the way. What else? Have we got yeah, and on? and here's the thing. We we hit, we've kind of run out of time. Yeah. But I think I think we talk about one more thing. I I think I know what i'd like to talk about mm. um I, I don't know if you want to uh okay yes. i would like to say you want to talk about the forespoken discourse no darn go on what was no, that darn talk? double darn uh golden eye okay golden eye golden eye so yeah, yeah, yeah weirdly we spoke about golden eye two weeks ago we did we didn't know about this, did we? Nope. All right, then. So hang on a minute. We'll just do the headlines. Uh, you know, I, I should say, I've just mentioned, you know, I've mentioned before that I was a rare game jam and that I've got a, a Sea of Thieves pencil and a Sea of Thieves book that Rare gave me. I, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. It's no, not, I'm not no weirdly, we both, um, not, we both talked about this just before Christmas, I think. But all right, yeah. so let's, I'll, I'll just run through the headlines of the other two then and then we can get cracking on Golden Eye, right? So one of the things that we... Uh, had considered was talking about Forspoken. The reason that we were talking about Forspoken is because the game has finally come out from Square Enix. The game launched to sort of critical, well, it was 69 on Metacritic. Nice. The kind of general nice. consensus in the opinions of uh, the professionals uh, are that the parkour mechanics were very cool and the combat was nice, but the open world felt quite lacking. So did the story and dialogue. Not too dissimilar from Sega's Sonic Frontiers, which came out to big fan hoo-ha oh, recently everyone was like whoa but for spoken's kind of had a bit of a tepid response so that was one of the things we we're going to talk about um but there's lots to go into there isn't there really so maybe we should return to it i, I, I think i think we should return to it but you know i think um there has been a lot of harshness from people who haven't even played the game as well now i do not deny a critic their opinion that is very important mm-hmm. right and every point that is made by a critic is valid when it gets into you know, let's let's rub dirt in its face now and, and kick it when it's down and just try and pour kerosene yeah. and light it up on fire yeah. like a crimson head in Resident Evil. <laughs> that's that's where I don't that's, that's where that's I, I start to get a bit like, yeah. you know, that is ace, that reference. Can can, we, can 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 people be a little bit I, nicer? I, I, I thought it was quite harsh. I thought it was quite harsh, but but it's it yeah, very so. harsh. And it's it's only um actually tomorrow I'm gonna go out and actually just buy it. I'm gonna buy it because I, I do want to see what it's all about. I was very interested in it. Um, I don't think it's necessarily going to be, um, I, I don't know. Like I, I tried to stay away from information and I saw a trailer or two. And I was like, it looks visually Same. nice. Lots of cool spells. Yeah. Who doesn't love a spell? Who doesn't love a um, spell? Yeah. And I think the thing to remember as well is what's interesting about this is, you know, this game is made by uh, Luminous Productions mm-hmm. at Square Enix, right? And this is, um, this is, this is a Japanese take on uh, a, uh, you know, on on uh, their perception of you know American life and, and and so on, bringing it into a fantasy setting and mixing, you know, I, I'm I'm quite fascinated by that. And I know there's been a lot of backlash about ah oh, the dialogue and uh, there's a bag of cash on the floor, but why can't you pick it up and get the cat at the same time? It's like you're playing a game, yeah. uh, you know. It's um, yeah. I, I just I, I just 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 be kind to people that do poor their hearts and souls into making a game and an experience yeah it's it's, um, it's interesting it, it's interesting yeah. and, and and just the same as what you're saying I'm, I'm i'm more interested in hearing the opinions of people who have played it 
to be honest. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, what I will say is I won't be picking it up solely for the fact that uh, I'm trying to kind Magic of... the Gathering. Well, it is, to be completely honest with you, mate, it is Magic the Gathering. I've, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. playing ranked at the moment. But if I'm going to pick anything up this week, it is going to be, stick to what you know, Dead Space Remake, which is out on Friday, the day of this podcast. <gasps> uh-huh, it is. So that was one thing we are going to talk about. The other one, we can literally just state the headline because this is just... Phew, Riot Games, the world's biggest video game uh, phenomenon, really, I think. The free-to-play game League of Legends, uh, followed by the also free-to-play Valorant and the not-as-good Magic the Gathering clone Legends of Terror, have absolutely soared to success. Some of the most played, watched, viewed, interacted with video games of all time. Riot Games who, have... Who, who, who also, like many of us, broke the uh, video game curse <laughs> of having... You know, a successful show on Netflix. Yeah, Ar- Arcane, right, or whatever it yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly, and, and widely considered one of the best. So that's it. R- Riot, mm. though, have stated officially that League of Legends source code, much like um, Grand Theft Auto was recently, was stolen and being held at ransom. Now you can read the ransom note online, and it's uh, fairly interesting. They 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 mention the hackers mention that they have taken the full source code of the game, as well as the complete anti cheat source code for all games which means that you'll be able to you know buy make sell hacks around that and they're asking for a small fee of 10 million dollars to return the um the source code to riot untouched so there we go i mean uh, I, the, the one interesting thing i, I want to put sorry it's, it's all interesting and disgraceful mm-hmm. don't get me wrong um but you know i, I think it's um it, it, this, they also said that it's been compromised by a social engineering attack, um, uh, you know, which VGC, Video Games Chronicles, mm-hmm. uh, have, have gone on to say, you know, is it's a method which involves the psychological manipulation of people into performing actions or divulging confidential information. Yeah. And I think this goes back to, um, we, we spoke about Uber in the past, that it was around yeah, a similar that, time right. as something else happening as well um, in, in the game industry. Um, and this seems to be an interesting uh, thing coming about recently. Yeah, uh, that is not necessarily. Again, yeah. yeah, that is not necessarily. I'm gonna crack the, uh, you know, the, the, I'm not gonna go Trinity style in the Matrix and, and hack the uh, no, IRS it, database or whatever it is. <laughs> it's, it's it's simply again social engineering, and you'd be surprised yeah. actually that when you look at so many real hacking attempts in real life, and when you look at things that people say are hackers, so much of it is actually a human error. So there we go. Very very yeah. interesting, um, and again kind of sad really but hey it is yeah. what it is some cool news then to, to end the podcast uh this week is as you alluded to goldeneye is back in the news goldeneye as in not the pierce brosnan sean bean sort of movie from 1997 but in fact the video game from i, I guess also 1997 um mm. yeah goldeneye 007 seminal first person shooter uh one of the, you know, anyone who played it at the time, multiplayer, four-player split screen, will probably have nothing but good things to say about it. Why is it in the news, Aaron? <laughs> well, why, is, why is it in the news? Because if you are listening to this on Friday, the 27th, the day that this podcast comes out, it means that right now you can go and play Goldeneye. It's, it's, it was a Wednesday. We're recording on a, what day is it today? Wednesday. It's on a Wednesday, yeah. <laughs> Record on a Wednesday. Um, and uh, Rare just dropped today say, surprise, it's out on the 27th and it's, the world's gone mad. Um, mm. So the, the interesting thing and uh, to mention with this is that it's going to be launching on Xbox uh, with improved visuals and performance yeah. and so on. On Game Pass. Uh, on Game Pass. Uh, and it's also going to be releasing uh, via Nintendo Online um, by with the expansion pass uh, on the N64 uh, catalog. Um in its original form. Now, there's two things here. You have the option of playing on Xbox with the improved performance and, and you know going through the game in a, a more, uh, I'm not going to say modern, but an improved light. Um, but if you want to play, uh, as you remember, the four-player split screen online, you have to have it. You have to have that experience on Nintendo Switch. Yeah, it's. Very odd. I remember actually, funnily enough, we spoke about we spoke about the exact thing just a few weeks ago. Where we said it was weird that you have to kind of sort of um, pick and choose uh, yeah. which experience you want. Um, but I suspect for the vast majority of people uh, who remember, they just want to kind of burn through the game 
as they love yeah. and, and want. So yeah, kind of cool that you can you can get an Xbox controller and smash through it. Like I say, I told I told everybody about the uh, publicly available uh, remake that never happened, but uh, there's an above board Game Pass friendly version or Nintendo Switch version available if you want to sort of karate chop people to death or throw a hat yeah. at them. Um, if you haven't played the game. Don't worry about that. But if you did, <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, also, sort of shouts out to Grant Kirkhope because we mentioned him a little bit earlier. He did the music for yeah. that, didn't he? He did. Again, earworms. They are. The, go- the Golden Eye uh, soundtrack is absolutely slamming. It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. Nice, nice bit of a uh, nice bit of a way to end this uh, podcast, really. Then with uh, a complete uh, throwback to the good old days. If you if you didn't ever play Golden Eye, I'm really curious to see what would happen if you picked it up and played it now. You have to imagine I'm, being there, but I'm, I'm really curious. I, I'm, I'm curious. I can't. I'm trying to figure out how it's going to control. Um, but you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited just to roll back casually. If I'm honest, I, I just want to play the dam over and over again on the different difficulties, do all the different objectives, plan that tracker bug it is, on satellite. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I, I said to you before, I played it very recently, and 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 I can't tell. The same way as if I played Pokemon Red right now. I would say yeah. in my head, this would be just as good as the, the first day I played it. But if I'd never played it before, I don't know how I'd feel. So yeah. th- there we go. Uh, really, really curious to see what uh, you guys uh, think is one of the strongest video game OSTs this week. Uh, well, ever, but let us know this week. You can tweet us at Wired Unplugged. You can mm-hmm. reply to this. Probably this is a video, isn't it? Someone's made this into a video. Wow, that's weird, isn't it? You can reply below if you if you want to let us know your favorite video game soundtrack or just video game musical moment. There might be like a bit where you can just go bring with an instrument and you really like that. Just let us know. Uh, until then, uh, me and Aaron are going to be uh, eating some snacks um, and watching Xbox Developer Direct or whatever it's called. I'm playing Bulwark and Magic the Gathering probably. All right, nice one, guys. Yeah. See you all soon. Stay warm because it's still chilly out there. Cost of living crisis and all that. See you for episode 49. Bye. Wired. Unplugged.